the bravest woman in America by Marissa Moss. The bravest woman in America. Ida loved the sea. She loved it when it was calm and coppery in the sun. She loved it when it was wild with froth like a herd of stampeding horses. She loved the crash of the waves, the screech of the gulls, the wheeling overhead, the bite of the salt in her nose as she breathed in the ocean salt. She loved it all. So when her father got a job as a lighthouse keeper, she felt like the luckiest girl in the world. Twice a day, Pa had to row out to check on the light perched on Lime Rock the small rocky island poking out of Newport Harbor. Young Ida begged to go with him. Pa laughed and handed her the oars. You pull your weight and you can come. The oars were heavy and awkward, but Ida was stubborn. She pushed and she pulled until the boat lurched forward. It was slow, it was hard. Her shoulders ached and her hands blistered. But when the front of the boat bumped against the small beach of Lime Rock, Ida felt a bubble of triumph lift her up. She'd made it. From that day on, Ida rode with Pa as often as she could. She told, he told her stories about storms and drowning sailors, sinking boats and rescues. He taught her how to check on the light, how to fill it with oil, trim the wick, and clean the lens. Most of all, he taught her to row. Over the years, Ida grew strong and lean. Now she gripped the oars, the boat glided smoothly through the water. If the wind was wild, she knew how to lean into it. If the waves were high, she knew how to stay calm and let the sea break over her. The oars were part of her now and her strokes were sure and steady. When Ida turned 15, she got the best birthday present she could have hoped for. The lighthouse board had decided that Lime Rock needed a keeper to live there at all times. There had been too many shipwrecks and too many lost boats. A full-time keeper would make the harbor safe. So a house was built with a tower holding the light it was a real official lighthouse and Ida and her family would be the first to live there. Ida loved watching the sea for any sign of trouble. She loved polishing the lighthouse lens so the light would shine bright. She loved rowing her two younger brothers and her sister to school and back home every day. You're a real lighthouse keeper now her sister told her. I think you're the bravest girl in America, her youngest brother said. And you're definitely the best rower ever, her other brother boasted. Ida shook her head. No, not yet, but someday I will be. That day came sooner than Ida wanted. Pa got sick. He grew weaker and weaker every day until he was no longer able to care for the lighthouse. While Paul sat at the window watching the sea, a blanket wrapped around him. Ida and her mother kept the light full and strong, beaming over the water. Ida was ready for the job. Like her father, she kept watch over the harbor, scanning the waves for any ship in trouble. Ida had never seen her father rescue anyone but he had told her how to haul people over the stern so they didn't tip her boat. He had described how to lift a man out of the water and how to warm him in blankets afterward so the chill didn't kill him. Ida felt ready for anything. One winter evening, Ida spotted a small boat bobbing wildly in the harbor, tipping back and forth as a boy shinnied up the mast. The sun was setting and Ida's first thought was that the boy was trying to get a better view of where to head. Then she heard laughter carried on the wind 
three other boys on the boat waved their arms at each other, whooping loudly. It was just a game, a bit of fun. But to Ida, it looked dangerous. She watched as the boat pitched over, throwing all four boys into the sea. Then she didn't watch any more. She ran to her own small boat and rowed out to the boys. It was darker now. The waves were wilder. She could hear yelling, and through the mist, she could make out the upturned keel of the boat. The boys tried to cling to its slippery sides, but there was nothing to grip. Their legs churned in the water in panic. Their clothes weighed them down in the slapping waves, and the icy cold of the water made them gasp for breath. Ida reached the first boy and grabbed him, just as her father had told her to. She pulled him into the boat then quickly rowed around to reach the next boy who was thrashing and spitting water. She hauled him, him in too. And then the next one, and then the next. The boys' faces were white with cold and their lips were blue. One passed out, lying limp in the bottom of the boat. I didn't think. She rowed harder and faster than she ever had. The waves crashed over her head tilting the boat along a wall of green and gray. Ida kept rowing, frantic to get them all to safety. I can do it, she told herself. I have to do it. When she pulled up the boat onto the beach at Lime Rock, she threw down the oars and looked up, exhausted, into her mother's proud face. Well done, Ida. Let's get these boys into the house said Mrs. Lewis. They need to get warm and dried. Once the boys had recovered and the seas had calmed, Ida rowed them back to town. Then she sent her boat back toward the lighthouse. Each stroke of her oars brought her closer to her home, closer to where she belonged. And when she got there, her father was waiting for her. He didn't say anything. He just hugged her hard. He handed her his captain's hat. Ida was in charge of the lighthouse now, and she knew it. This is the author's notes. It says, Ida Lewis, born February 25th, 1842, went on to rescue many more people after that first time when she was 16. She was 63 when she made her last rescue. Officially, she gave saved 18 lives, but the real number may be as high as 25. After her father's death, Ida's mother was made official keeper while Ida did the actual work. When her mother also died, Ida finally got the title to go with her lifelong work. For 39 years, she was the keeper of Lime Rock. She was also known as the bravest woman in America according to Harper's Weekly, and an act of Congress in 1874 was recognized for her heroism with the Congressional Life-Saving Medal. In 1907, a year after the American Cross of Honor was created by act of Congress, Ida became the first woman to receive that award. At a time when women couldn't vote and someone like Susan B. Anthony could ask, are women persons? Ida proved that a woman can be as brave as a man. Anyone who thinks it's unfeminine to save lives has the brains of a donkey, she said once in an interview. Thousands came to visit her each year, including President Ulysses S. Grant, General William Tecumseh Sherman, General Ambrose Burnside, and Admiral George T. Ida lived with her eye on the guiding beam of the lighthouse and the sea around her until her death in 1911 at the age of 69.